Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to your reading for April 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. <clears throat> so this is going to be a general reading for April 2019. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, you can go ahead and, you can go ahead and email me. All the information is in the description box below. Um, yeah, and if you can't decide which reading to go with, just let me know a little bit about the situation and I'll help you figure it out, yeah? A quick little announcement, if you are in the New York uh, tri-state area, um, especially if you are in Westchester County, I will be appearing at Awaken Fair in Tarrytown on the 28th of April. I will be doing readings there, so if you like, you can book a, a session with me in advance. Sessions are 15 or 30 minutes. The link to that is in the description box below. Um, and uh, pre-booking ends and on the 27th. So if you would like to pre-book, you can go ahead and do that up until the 27th. And then um, I will be there on the 28th. Yeah? Okay. So we're keeping it like we did last month. Um, so I'm recording this so I can have a conversation with you guys. But then also I'm going to be pulling a Oracle guidance or an Oracle card from the uh, Unicorn Oracle and then using the Golden Universal Tarot for the general spread. Yeah? So let's just get straight to it, Taurus. Let's see what we've got for you this month. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Taurans, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for April 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Also, guys, I don't know if you can hear, but there, there's some sort of generator that's going on across the street. Hopefully it's not too distracting, but hey, what can you do if they're doing work? <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got for you. What is the theme for your month, Taurus? Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What is the theme for Taurus? Here we go. Best, best, please, Spirit, just one card for Taurus for the month of April. For April 2019. Okay, well, Aries did the same thing. Didn't want to come out immediately, but here we go. All right. Here is your, or your Oracle card for the month, the theme for your month, action. Now is the perfect time to act. Take inspired action towards your dreams. Move forward with confidence. So, for any of you that may feel like you've been in a rut lately, now it's time to just start acting. I mean, I know exactly how that feels. Um, you know, I hit, I personally hit a, a situation where, you know, I kind of fell into a rut and I've been dealing with a bit of depression and blah, blah, blah. But at one point, I got, I, I just said to myself, Eric, you just got to start moving. Okay, you just have to start going. And so I understand sharing that Taurus energy because in Western astrology, my son is in Taurus. And so I do resonate with that, you know, from time to time. I can go back and forth between Taurus or Aries. Aries is my Eastern sun sign. But um, also in Eastern astrology, my, my Mars is in Taurus, which is Mars is your planet of action. But... Um, yeah, you know, you can go through your period of uh, grieving, of you know, feeling the 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 feeling the emotions, feeling the pain, and I, I you know, um, you know, working through that. But then at some point, you're just gonna have to get up and start doing something about it, right? And I definitely see April is a time for you to do that. Um, I already feel like I might be triggering some people a little bit here, but. It's okay. I mean, I'm not sure. Taurus is a fixed sign, all right? And they're not really going to be forced into anything that they're not willing or ready to, willing or ready to do. Um, so if you have a Taurus around you that's going through some shit and is just kind of, I don't know, maybe wallowing in their own pity or something like that, forcing them to take action or pushing them towards taking action is really not going to help, okay? Encouragement would help better, but um, I do feel like if you've been in a rut, Taurus, April is going to be a good month for you 
to, to get moving in a new direction, right? to take some action towards healing or fixing whatever it is that's bothering you. Yes? All right, Taurus, one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for your month. All righty, overall energy for you, Taurus. We have the Six of Pentacles. This is an energy of recipro reciprocation, give or take. Um, for some of you, you're identifying situations in your life in which it, uh, there is no balance. Um, the balance is it, it, it's imbalance between give and take. You may be overgiving or someone else may be overgiving to you. Um, but also the biggest thing that I heard when I saw this card, self-care, okay? Um, giving back to yourself, taking care of yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. And that absolutely has to do with this action card that's coming into play also. Giving yourself what you need in order to heal. Because also, sixes are, num are, are a number of healing, okay? And harmony. Bringing harmony into your life. Uh, taking action towards healing yourself. Helping yourself feel better. You've got the king of swords also. You could be dealing with an Aquarian. Um, but also, this could be your energy. Uh, for some of you, there could be a, a, an air sign or um, an Aquarian specifically, or just a masculine energy that is maybe a little bit narcissistic or a bit of an energy vampire, and you're needing to take some sort of action in balancing out that relationship. Yes, you've got the Ten of Swords underneath that. Okay, so for some of you specifically, this is a situation in which you're dealing with some sort of a, like a masculine energy. Okay, it's the energy. It's not the gender. It could be a woman that embodies more masculine energy. Okay, but um, and this doesn't even have to be. I'm picking up that for some of you, this could be a situation in which, you know, they've been very much in their masculine energy a lot lately. Um, that's just a really specific situation. But. Um, with the Ten of Swords here, there is an ending, or Spirit is saying a completion, when it comes to overgiving in some sort of relationship. Now, if that doesn't resonate with you, then the energy I'm needing to take action, seeing things clearly for what they are. So if you've been in some sort of a rut, or you've been dealing with a lot from the past, a lot resurfacing from the past, um, a lot of deep, heavy emotions, um, now I really do see... April either is the time to do so or you will be doing so in picking yourself up from like picking yourself up, dusting yourself off, seeing things truly for what they are, getting a lot and a lot of clarity about it and bringing the situation to an end, taking action also to bring the situation to an end. Okay. And then finally, for your overall energy, you've got the Hierophant. So here you are, Taurus, showing up in your reading here. Um, that's excellent. But you see, the Hierophant can also, it, talk, it is Taurus energy, yes. It's an energy of commitment. Um, it's a fixed energy. It's an energy of society, of university, of status quo, sure. But it's also an energy of teaching and learning, higher learning. And also, it's an energy of, I, I see it as a representation of your higher self, right? So, um, but I'm seeing here that there is a lot of learning that's happened. A lot of wisdom that has been gained and is continue, going to continue being gained, sure. But um, in whatever specific situation you're, you're dealing with here, Taurus, um, a lot has been learned. And now you can take some action towards changing the situation, alleviating the situation, helping yourself feel better, that kind of thing. Okay? So let's get into the rest of the energies here for you. Um, normally, I say this is the first and second half of your month. It doesn't have to be that way, okay? Time is fluid. Time is actually kind of an illusion. But, um, well, not kind of. It is an illusion. <laughs> but anyway, um, this either could be the first half and second half of your month, or this just could you could just look at it as the first half and second half of your reading. And the energies are, you know, intertwining and flowing through and whatnot, whatever. Yes? So in the first half of the reading... First set of surrounding energies for you, Taurus, for the month of April. You've got the Three of Swords. Yeah, you've been dealing with a lot of heartbreak, haven't you, Taurus? I mean, for the most part, this doesn't feel like it's anything all that new. Granted, it could be. This is a general reading. Um, but still, it still doesn't feel... It feels like, yes, it could have been recent, okay? But I'm not really picking up on any new heartbreak 
happening. Again, again, it could be, you know, because this is a general reading. But for the most part, the biggest thing I'm picking up on is you're dealing with some sort of heartbreak from the past. It could be the distant past. It could just be, you know, fairly recent, but you're dealing with that Three of Swords, okay? Three of Swords is coupled with the Five of Swords. Wow, that's a heavy energy. Um, some, for, for some of you, this really feels social. Um, this feels like competition, jealousy, uh, someone may be jealous of you or intimidated by your energy um, that was just really combative. That was really combative and was just trying to maybe just trying to sabotage you at any moment that they could. See, the thing about the Five of Swords is, though, even though someone may look like they're coming out on top in the beginning, no one actually wins here. It's a lose-lose situation, right? And you could even look at it it's as in the simple form of we are all interconnected. We are all pieces of the same whole, right? We are all a part of each other. And so when you hurt one person, you hurt yourself. When you hurt someone else, you hurt yourself. So you could see it as simply just like that. But also, uh, I really feel like pride and ego got in the way here, which ultimately didn't look good for whoever was trying to tear you down or backstab you or one-up you in some way. Now, granted, Taurus, this could be you. This is a general reading, so please take it as it resonates. Fit it how it does not how it fits into your life. Um, yeah. But whatever heartbreak you dealt with, whatever jealousy or competition, backstabbing or whatnot that you dealt with, it was it had to do with people either being intimidated by your energy or jealous of you in some way, okay? But that's what led to this heartbreak here. And I'm going to say, go ahead and say it's for both parties. Even if it's just the other person whose ego or um, reputation took a little bit of a, a dent, we'll say. That's kind of, you know, if this is a narcissistic person that you're dealing with, having their... their, their um, their image, their self-image, you know, get tarnished in some way is heartbreaking, right? There you go. <laughs> Second set of surrounding energies for you, Taurus. We have the King of Cups. But you see, emotional responsibility. You could be dealing with a water sign, too. You could have water in your chart. Specifically, this could be... Um, this could be Scorp <clears throat> Scorpio because the King of Cups is represents the, the archetype of Scorpio. Um, but emotional responsibility. There is a lot of action being taken here. Or maybe you're being set up for taking action here. But part of that action that you're needing to take has to do with taking some sort of emotional responsibility here. Or um, accepting your role in whatever it is you dealt with. Because just because, you know... Uh, yeah. In some way, you always have a part in a situation, all right? Even if it's really not that much, even if you're pretty much, you're fairly innocent in the situation, you weren't out to hurt anybody, but someone was coming at you, you still, you're still involved, okay? But this is absolutely about taking emotional responsibility for the situation. And the King of Cups is also speaking to the healing aspect that comes from that, from taking that sort of action through the, the water archetype, right? King of Cups is coupled with the Four of Swords. Absolutely. So uh, after some time of respite or a break, a uh, rest, um, I do feel like you'll be able to feel better emotionally. Um, and the Four of Swords also talks about a change in perspective, right? So, um, or for some of you, it's about letting knowledge integrate within you so that you can see things differently, so that you can take some sort of emotional responsibility here, okay? And now they are dealing with barriers outside. I'm sorry for the noise, guys, but I hope it's not too distracting. Okay, your challenge in the first half of your reading here, you've got the Seven of Cups. So options, there is some sort of confusion here, um, but... <sighs> The way you deal with this confusion or the way that you deal with these options is you take action, okay? Sitting around and just staring at them or watching things just 
you know, circle uh, around you making your head spin is not going to help. You may have been doing that for some time. You may have felt overwhelmed by that. And that actually could be what the Seven of Cups is representing right now. Um, the, this overwhelming feeling that you're having because there's just so much swirling around you or you're becoming aware of so many different things that you just don't know what to do. And yes, at one in the very beginning, uh, you know, if you want to like kind of sit back and be like, whoa, what's going mm -hmm. on here? Just kind of gaining your bearings. That's OK. But at some point, you're going to have to get up and start sifting through the muck. Right. So that is your challenge here. And now it's time to start doing that because, I mean, action is your theme for the month. Seven of Cups is coupled with the Three of Cups. Mm -hmm. Celebration. But the balance between mind, body, and spirit. The Three of Cups is also a card of union in some circumstances. And you could see that as the union within you. Getting your body, your mind, and your spirit on the same page so that you can deal with this confusion and take some sort of action here. I feel like for some of you, that was the major problem. Your body wanted one thing, your mind wanted another, but your spirit was saying, no, we got to go this way. And it's like the, there were three parts of you just going in completely different directions. And so now what's happening, whatever has been going on for you lately, Taurus, for either this is a general theme or maybe this is something more specific. I'm not quite sure. But um, whatever you've been dealing with has been in an effort to help you bring this union of body, mind, and spirit together. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay. Your closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading. Here you got the lovers. This is another union card, but it's also, it could represent Gemini. Um, this is a card of either choices or divine union. Okay. And we were just talking about with the Three of Cups, bringing yourself into union and your closing message or potential outcome in the first half of the reading with these energies that are going on here, it, this is resulting in a divine union. But also for some of you, if you're needing to make a choice, bringing yourself together, you know, bringing your pieces together in this way is going to help you make a choice, okay? The lovers is coupled with... The Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles lately... Okay, so we could be talking about a relationship coming forward here. We could be talking about... Um, so some of you could be... Your healing aspect here could be from a past relationship. And now you have someone that's willing to come forward for you. But this would be after your change in perspective. And so your change in perspective would help you see that there actually is someone around you that actually is in alignment with you that would like to, you know, take things to the next level potentially. So with the lovers and the ten of pentacles, it's, it's, this could be um, a union coming together and potentially a family starting or getting the ball rolling towards starting a family together. But the other thing that the ten of pentacles has been talking about a lot lately is lessons learned. Okay. Okay. Um, and so especially, like I was saying, for some of you, whatever it is you've been going through has been in service of bringing you into greater union with yourself. And so here you go. The lesson has been learned, the Ten of Pentacles, and the union was achieved or is or going to be achieved, right? Again, I mean, this is for April, but, you know, this doesn't have to happen at any certain time. You know, everybody's time is different. Everybody's timelines are different. This really could be something that kicks off in April that doesn't really complete itself until later in the year. Who knows? Take it as it resonates. But if it's resonating with you already, just, you know, follow along and see what you can do to fit this advice into your life. Yes? Excellent. I also want to point out, before I go any further, you have two tens, the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Pentacles. Completions. Yes? Excellent. Getting into the second half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies, you've got the Fool. Beautiful. Beautiful, Taurus. Really, excuse me, honestly, lessons learned. Okay? Struggles overcome. 
cycles completed, union within, inner union, inner balance achieved, leading you to a brand new start. This doesn't have to be physical, though, because I just felt like this fool energy literally could just be feeling brand new, a brand new feeling, maybe a, a new excite, excitement or zest for life, okay? The fool is coupled with the king of wands. Look, guys, there is so much action oriented within this reading here. Because of all of the masculine energy that's coming through here. King of Swords, King of Cups, and now the King of Wands. Okay? You could be dealing with a Leo, potentially, or you could have Leo in your chart. I have Leo in my chart. As far as Western astrology goes, Leo is my moon sign. But anyway, zest for life, confidence, knowing having a greater understanding of what it is you truly want out of life and knowing how to get it. Also knowing when to hold back, knowing when to strike, the right when the right time to strike is. Lots of action here. This is great. But you see, this action that's coming through here, it doesn't feel like it's forced. It feels like it's just a natural flow, okay? Which is excellent which is really all that a Taurus needs. The Taurus just, to take action, a Taurus just needs to feel like the time is right. They're not going to do anything if they're not feeling it, if the energies aren't there, blah, blah, blah. They're, they're not going to do it. And the more you try and force them to, <laughs> be careful with that. <laughs> you don't want to poke the bull, guys, okay? Anyway, second set of surrounding energies for the second half of your reading here. You have the moon. Mm. This could be speaking to a dark night of the soul energy. Um, this also could be talking about uh, illusions, but also psychic ability, intuition here, okay? Some of you may be going through a dark night of the soul. Some of you may be entering into a dark night of the soul when we get into April. But I feel like with all of the other energies that are in this reading... And also what Spirit is saying, because Spirit is saying right now that there is a dark night of the soul, but that's wrapping up for the most part, okay? The moon is coupled with three of wands. Um, that's actually really good. So yeah, the, 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 if you've been in a dark night of the soul energy lately, that is wrapping up. It's going to be wrapping up. And you're either going to have a lot of... Well, you're going to be uh, uh, receiving some sort of return on an investment here with the Three of Wands. And that could just be from surmounting this Dark Night of the Soul, for coming out of this Dark Night of the Soul, for you know getting out of that and feeling better. Um, also, for some of you, this could represent knowing which way, to, which direction to move in. Having greater clarity on your own path that you've been on for some time. And this path could really just mean spiritual awakening. Yeah? Your own personal spiritual path. So that's a good sign. So if you're caught up in a dark night of the soul right now, just look, just know that, especially with all the other energies that are coming through here, that you'll be coming out of it pretty soon. Pretty soon. Okay? Uh, your challenge in the second half of your reading here, you've got the tower. But that's what this Dark Knight of the Soul energy has been. That's what all of this stuff has been. It's been the effect of a tower moment. Scorpio energy. The moon can represent Cancerian energy. Or Pisces energy. Like I was saying with the Three of Swords, this doesn't feel like a new tower moment is coming. Now, for some of you, you may, um, Archangel Michael, for some of you, you may experience a tower moment in relation to something that's already been going on, and in that case, it could be seeing something differently, seeing something from a new perspective that kind of like shit rocks your world. And it was like, oh my God, I never thought it that way. And it kind of, kind of feels like a tower moment. Okay. But again, I mean, sure, that's a, that's a new tower moment, but the situation isn't new. It's the same situation. For others of you, you've just been dealing with a tower moment for the past few months, I want to say. 
But it's, Spirit is saying it's all clearing up. You're handling the challenge quite well. All right? The tower is coupled with, yeah, the Eight of Pentacles. So this is a past energy, this tower energy. It's not really something that new. And you've been working very hard at rebuilding. Like Spirit said, you've been, oh, you've been, you've overcome quite well. You've handled this quite well. You are handling it quite well. All right? That's excellent, Taurus. Okay, closing message or potential outcome here in the second half of your reading. The counterpart, the Queen of Wands. You know what? This is really good. I love, I love that the Queen of Wands is coming out at the very end of your reading, Taurus. Why? Because you have so much action coming through in this reading. You have your, your theme for the month is action. Your overall energy includes the King of Swords. Your, the rest of your energy includes ooh, confirmation. Sorry, my phone is going off. Um, the rest of your energy includes the King of Cups and the King of Wands. And now that was supposed to be, oh, you know why? Okay. No, sorry guys. Give me boop. Okay. Sorry. Um, you have the King of Cups and the King of Wands. And that's a lot of action energy here, right? But to round it out, to balance things out, you have the flow of the feminine with the Queen of Wands. Now, this could speak to a counterpart situation, okay? Um, potentially Twin Flames, not going to lie, potentially Twin Flames. You do have the Lovers and the King and the Queen of Wands. And I do see the king and the queen of wands in, in twin flame situations, I do see the king and the queen of wands as the representations of the divine masculine and the divine feminine. Um, so you could see some twin flame unions coming together. And if, that, if that's the case, congratulations. I am very, very happy for you. Um, but in other cases, this is just the balancing out. The It's like the cooling off of all the fire, the tempering of all the fire and action that's coming through with all of this masculine energy here in the Queen of Wands, being receptive, um, magnetic, uh, magical, yes? Allowing something to come to her, right? Queen of Wands is coupled with the Ace of Pentacles. There really could be some unions happening here, guys. And it doesn't have to be Twin Flame situation. It could just be counterparts, some sort of relationship. And an offering. Steady commitment, maybe. Maybe something has been brewing. Like I said, some of you may have been healing from a uh, romantic situation from the past. And now, once you gain some sort of new perspective, you have someone that's willing to come forward. Or you, at least you realize you have someone. Or you realize that you're actually worthy of it. Yeah? Yeah. That's excellent, Taurus. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, again, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, go ahead and email me. All the information is in the description box below. And if you would like to book a session with me at Awaken Fair on the 28th of April in Terrytown, New York, you can click the link in the description box below to pre-book your session. Time slots are in 15 and 30 minute increments. With that said, I hope you guys have a great month. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to connecting with you again for your birthday season, which is at the end of April, into May. But I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of May. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.